Hi, this is Andon at Portage Bay Solutions. I wanted to share with you a modular solution to FileMaker's missing portal sort headers. So the sorting technique um, that I'm using for the example is based on Kevin Frank's technique. He has a great article on FileMakerHacks.com and if you aren't familiar with it, I highly recommend you check it out. It provides a great way to allow FileMaker to sort portals. The modular piece I'm going to share with you here is um, actually the visual interaction of that sorting function, but it can work for any sorting process. So basically here we have a portal, we have our header row. Uh, the expected behavior is if you click on the header, you should change the sorting order. So if I click on it here, you can see I get a nice little icon that displays a ascending waterfall or descending waterfall. And so my sort is ascending and then there's descending so on and so forth. And if I click on customers, I get the same and price. So the same is true for all the buttons. Basically all of them can be clicked and we can easily change our sorter. That's exactly what you would expect. Doing that in FileMaker is actually, has been very difficult and there's been different techniques used, um, but the for UI constraints, like moving them around, manipulating, they're just difficult. With the add-on of the button bar, we can get a lot closer to a modular sorting button that displays the sort. There are still some challenges, but this gets us a lot closer. So I'm going to put a link uh, so you can download the sample, but I did kind of want to just go through quickly, show you how easy it is to add a button to the layout, and then set it up. So if we look in the sample file, we've got a how to install instructions, and I'll get into that later. Um, and then we've got additional buttons. Uh, buttons 6 through 12 are listed here. Um, on the layout itself, we've got buttons 1 through 5. And then there's some additional layouts with the buttons repeated, so you don't have to rename them exactly. But what I wanted to show you is how to add a button to the layout. So if I go into layout mode here, uh, you can see my existing five buttons. And I can open this up, and here's my other six buttons. And if we click on these, you can see this is BB.6, so we know it's button bar 6. And, of course, this one's BB.7. We click on the second panel, BB.7.2, and BB. 7, 3. So each of them are very specifically named. It's very important that they remain named in that fashion in order for it all to work, but that's one of the only constraints. So here we have number 6. I'm going to take it and drag it onto my layout, place it where it needs to go, and this is this is where I say I, I like the uh, vertical layout, so I'm going to switch it to vertical, stretch it out, and uh, I'll set it for 20 here. There we go. Move it up so that it's aligned with the others. I'll go into browse mode and see how it looks. Hey, not too bad, right? Okay, but it's not doing anything, but we are getting a visual display of the waterfall. So now all we need to do is set the global variable that tells it what it's supposed to say, and then set the field that it needs to sort on. So go back into layout, and let me widen this out a little bit here. And you can see here on the right-hand side is a text object and it's got some text loaded into it that's basically got a let statement. This is a common technique um, used for by the FileMakerStandards.org site um, basically to be able to use a let statement to load up some global variables. This is conditionally formatted to do just that. You can see the conditional formatting tag and um, basically it fires off. Well here I'll show you the conditional format. Formula is evaluated, evaluates on self, it evaluates self with the let statement and builds the global variables. So the global variables we've got, we got the field name, the field name to sort, and the field dot sort, and then the portal's name. The portal's name, line items one, line items two. So this portal is named line items one. Okay. The field name, right? This was button number six. You can see we've got date, customers, price, quantity, sales, test six. So that one we're going to rename. Change that maybe to name. Let's go ahead and look at it in browse mode. And it's name. So now it's 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 changed its name, but it's still not sorting. We need to make one more adjustment, and that is the field to sort. And so the field that we're going to need to sort um, is actually called customers2 colon colon name first. So table customers2 field name name first. So we come down to our field field dot to sort. So there's the invoices date, customers to full name, line items price, line items quantity, line item sales. Oh, 
test six. That's the one we want to replace. So in between the two carriage returns, highlight, we'll put in our new text, customers two, colon, colon, name first. Close that up, go back into browse mode, save it. Now our name is there. We can sort ascending or descending. So pretty slick, pretty easy to change. And of course, adding the 12 to begin with is just as easy as that. You paste the 12 buttons down, set the global variables, and the parameters are set that allow it to interact with the portal. So now let me show you how easy it is to customize the button bars. If I go into layout, and I'll grab a button off a page that I like. So here's my new button that I've got, and if we look at it real fast, the button has hover over, and if we click on it, it changes color. So nice button. I want to make the rest of my buttons look the same. Uh, in order to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Go into layout, select the button I want to um, paint from, use my format painter tool, and if I double click it, it turns extra dark. This allows me to set it on multiple objects. So I'll set it on this one, I'll set it on that one, this one, that one, that one, that one. Now we'll go back into browse mode, and all of them have acquired that uh, format. Wasn't uh, I don't have to pick up a bunch of things, move them around. And if I needed to um, change them to match the dimensions, it's easy as well. And you could, of course, uh, change alignment for each one. Something along those lines. And now, you know, if we wanted to put spaces in them, make them look however we want. Pretty cool and easy to adjust. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in finding out how the button bars were created and what went into them as well as opportunities to make them better, look uh, for the next video. I have a deeper look into the button bars and how they were created.